Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Rick Locke, and I have the great uh, honor to be the uh, serve as the provost of uh, Brown University. And it's an especially wonderful honor to be able to um, moderate this discussion uh, with uh, uh, Davis Guggenheim. That was just a fantastic movie, really, really uh, incredible. So what I thought I would do is we have not a ton of time, but I thought what I would do is maybe um, ask a few questions just to kick it off and then sort of open it up uh, to, uh, to the audience. So um, I guess I just want to talk about the power. I mean, I'm still kind of, I'm going to drink a little water. <laughs> Um, that, that movie was just incredibly powerful. Um, and you're known for making uh, powerful uh, movies. I mean, uh, An Inconvenient Truth, Waiting for Superman. And I guess I just wanted to, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how this story came to you. How did this project uh, come to you? What motivated you? Uh, well, the producers of the movie, Walter Parks and Laurie McDonald, uh, they're Hollywood producers, and they... And they uh, got the rights to the book for her life rights for a movie with an actress. And they sat down with her and they said, who could play her? And they, and luckily, they, when they flew home to LA, they, they called me and said, would you like to direct it? And I, when they asked me, I said, give me a few days. Because I uh, sort of probably knew about as much as most people, I'd known that she was shot on her school bus. Um, she, uh, she hadn't yet spoken at the UN. and. Um, I realized that her story had more dimension to it. That she's known as the girl who was shot on her school bus, but really what was incredible to me was this mysterious relationship between a father and a daughter. And I immediately thought about the fact that I have a son who's here, but also two daughters. And what is it, what is it about this man in Pakistan who made his daughter feel so powerful and courageous and strong when I worry about that in Los Angeles when our schools are safe. I worry about my daughters feeling equal and feeling like they have a voice. And so the idea of father-daughter was a theme that I wanted to get at and the idea of the power of your voice, which we then started to animate. Yeah, that's great. So it, it's an incredible family. I mean, just sort of getting to know them uh, through, the, through the film. And I wonder, what was the impact that, that they had on you on just spending so much time with them, getting to know them as people? And what were some of the surprises that came from spending so much time with them? Well, you know, I, my father's Jewish, my mother's Episcopalian, uh, and here I was uh, getting off a plane in Birmingham, England, and taking a cab to their house and knocking on their door to meet this Muslim family. And I've met a few Muslim people, but I'd never really known a, tr a Muslim family like this. And I didn't know what I was gonna get or who I was gonna meet. And truthfully, I think, you know, we were in the class today talking with your class, um, and we talked, we talked a little bit about, um, this may be too esoteric, but the idea of this sort of reptilian brain and the diet of information that I got from this part of the world was always scary images, um, violence, um, terrifying world that I wanted to turn away from. And I realized that I approached this door, ringing this doorbell, uh, bringing some of that baggage with me. And I said, I, I want to I flip that on its head. Um, and so th when I walked through that door, I saw the opposite. I saw a kitchen table just like mine, you know. <laughs> a girl and two boys, we have a boy and two girls, but they were laughing and wrestling and teasing each other. And I said, oh man, there's something here. And if I could capture that, that joy and that universality, um, that there could be something very powerful. That's great. Maybe just one last question before we yeah. open it up. Um, sort of a common, uh, I, I guess, mission or, or theme of your work is uh, to promote social change through film. Yeah. Uh, and that's the class that you, uh, <laughs> Keith, and, and I are teaching um, about uh, social change and, and film. So how do you think this film is going to actually promote social change? What changes are you hoping for? Well, it's interesting. I, I, it's a very emotional day for me to come here. Uh, I graduated in 1986. I remember being a senior uh, week, the week of graduation feeling like my father made documentaries. He made these great social justice documentaries. I remember thinking, there's no opportunity for me 
in that world. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's really interesting the, the, the things that can, can talk you out of doing what you want to do. Um, I certainly did that for a very long time. So, and sitting in your class with these incredible students, um, it reminded me what happened to me when I was here. The, um, I was a sort of an immature boy from Washington, and here I am sitting next to all these incredible other students and being pushed by them and being uh, challenged by them and being um, invigorated in the way I was this morning in your class, in Keith's class. And uh, I've been doing press all week, and I've been really sort of actually truly bored by the questions uh, <laughs> that I've been getting from in, you know, journalists. But in your class, I was being asked these really tough questions. Um, not answering your question, but the idea that, 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 um, that um, first of all, that, 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 um, that I could even dream that a movie could do that is one thing. And so I, 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 I hesitate. Because you make it, I'm in the most vulnerable moment when the movie's about to come out. You don't know if anyone's going to go see it. Um, there's there's two, two things. You know, there's 66 million girls who are out of school. Um, 66 million girls, as Malala says, each with a story just like hers. And uh, my hope is that if, if the movie can help connect people to them, I mean, I, I, I'm interested in this idea of disconnect. We care about our own children, but do we care about children who are in Syria or who are crossing the border into Germany or um, in other places? Um, so my hope is, on one hand, there's a political mission, and if someone goes to this movie and ha helps educate a girl, that would be beautiful. But also, I think, if we connect. I mean, it's, uh, there's a sort of an existential question of, um, that I struggle with myself is when I read the newspaper, and I see a disturbing story, do I turn the page? Do I disconnect? And I guess on a more <laughs> um, uh, existential question for me is how do I, would, if, this, if this film could help people connect, to not disconnect, to step in, that if this ordinary girl could maybe convince another ordinary girl be courageous, or me, or a father to be courageous, that would be, and that's, you know, that's sort of hippie, dreamy stuff, but, but that's. Uh, I just want to slip in one last question, because um, <laughs> having seen the other, having seen the other uh, films, I, I, I wonder about if you, on purpose, try to do this kind of connection of the audience and particular emotions. Okay. I remember for Ink and Me and Truth, when I watched it the first time, I remember thinking it was sort of a combination of like outrage and fear. Mm -hmm. um, and this time it was a, a combination of sort of uh, sadness, uh, but also incredible pride and, and, and joy for this person. Do you kind of try to, I don't know, embed certain kinds of emotions that you think are gonna drive the audience when you're making your films? I shouldn't admit it, <laughs> but but, I guess, I guess if I had said yes, it would be, it sounds like it's a manipulation. Um, I think what happens is that I think where I start the journey of making the film, I'm starting where the audience starts. And that as I meet Malala, something is revealed. As I go to the Syrian border with her, something is revealed. And so as I, as I feel those, it's the opposite of journalism in a lot of respects. You're supposed to be dispassionate. But as my heart starts to open, I want the audience to feel that. And if, and as my, I also am very, last couple of films, I've been very um, tuned to my own cynical voices, which convince me not to care. And then I start to um, uh, access those voices and try to attack those voices to sort of unlock that idea. It sounds a little, that's a little bit highfalutin, but, it, but, but I do, I, there is something experiential and there's something um, not science, but just a sense of, of, of attacking those things and, 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 and access, accessing those things and attacking the cynical things to try to open people to connect. I think so. No, you do an amazing job uh, at that. Why don't we open it up for uh, questions and if people could just sort of identify themselves when I call on you. Yes. 
clear this is Ian from your class. <laughs> this is what I had to do today. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> um, you know, it's, 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 it's a good question. And uh, it's very delicate when a movie is asking the audience to do something. Like, I don't want to be told what to do. I don't want to be told what to do by my, <laughs> my friends. Why would a filmmaker tell me what to do? Um, uh, and yet, we go to movies to be part of something. Um, so I think you just have to walk that line very delicately. I think with Inconvenient Truth, it's interesting. With Inconvenient Truth, we made that film with none of the call to action at the end. And we took it to Sundance. And it, ha it had a sort of, um, people were shaken by it. And they were angry at me. <laughs> because I didn't give them a, um, a way to, to be involved. Um, I saw a movie at Telluride, which everyone here should see, called Spotlight. It's about the Boston Globe's investigation of the Catholic Church in Boston. Um, and it doesn't have a social action at the end of it. It might as well have said it, but at the end it just lists the different churches throughout the world where these scandals have been and, and you just, <laughs> that's enough. Um, so. It's, all, all I can say is, um, well, the, the other thing I would say is that the, the only curse, in my opinion, is for a film to have an agenda that the audience doesn't know. So if I'm watching a movie and then I go, oh, wait a minute, you know, they want me to do this, then I feel hoodwinked. Um, but also, for those of you who are filmmakers, it's, it's personal. It's very personal. And uh, we talked today uh, about this idea of a contract with your audience that you don't ever sign it, you don't ever say it, but you start a relationship as you tell the movie, as you tell the story, and you, and, um, you, you don't want to break that contract. So the contract is, I'm going to tell you this story, here's, you know, I'm not going to, climate change is real, we're going to explain why. Um, and we're not going to pretend any, we're not going to pretend otherwise. Great, thanks. Other questions? Yes, here in front. So my name is um, Sarah, and I was also in the class this morning. Um, and I, I don't have a question. Um, I can't quite articulate my thoughts very well, but I wanted to say thank you. Um, as a woman and as a, a woman born to a Muslim father, I really struggled for a long time with the idea of having a Muslim identity in a world that, that hated Islam so much. and seeing the kind of Islam that was portrayed in this movie is the Islam that I've always known to be peaceful and kind and tolerant and, and beautiful. So thank you for, for capturing something that um, I wish everybody could, um, could see and understand. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And thank, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Martha, and I'm also in the class. <laughs> I'm not doing this on purpose. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering about the decision to put the footage of Malala winning the Nobel Peace Prize in the way you did, like over the credits in a smaller um, screen, I guess. Because I think that's a really, that was a very interesting choice, and I guess I interpreted it as like aligned with Malala's quote from earlier about like the, the point of all this is not the award, it's the journey, but I think some people would have put that footage like front and center as the climax of the film. Or, so I just thought that was a very sort of poignant decision. And I'm 
wondering about the thought process. With, uh, I, it's so funny. I was watching it today. Um, it's been a few weeks since I've seen it, and uh, I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> That's so weird. Like, you think the movie's over, then it comes back. Uh, so I was like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Uh, it's um, one of the things that, I, that was important to me is that, that um, I, I, I show her as an ordinary girl. Um, and if you just sort of hammer people with this idea that she's won all these things and she's done all these impressive things. It, 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 I think creates that distance, and I wanted to, you know, see her at her kitchen table, and um, uh, and 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 in and, 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 and truth, awards really don't matter to her. In fact, at some like at some point last year, she was like saying, "It's literally you go to her house, and they're just like it's like a it's like a collection of odd shaped glass and ceramics of the things that people have sent her." And, um, and, it's, and it's weird sometimes. People give you awards for them, not for you. But that's a different story. But the, um, I didn't want her success and the things that made her an icon to get in the way with, of getting to know her. I think we have time for maybe one or two uh, more uh, questions. Yes. <laughs> visual art to make it storytelling and it, it was sort of a, um, a layer in it and by doing that I think it lets the viewer be more involved because you can always get into a story and let your mind go and go in that direction. So I think that It's interesting, we were in another thing that sort of came up in your class was this idea of, um, actually it was the Stories for Good at the Swearer Center. I mean, <laughs> um, uh, it was another incredible thing. We were talking about uh, being comfortable with failing uh, as, you, as you work. And um, it's, what I've learned is that um, it's the, 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 the trouble, the, the, the problems that you get stuck in are the ones that sort of tend to offer you some of the greatest um, solutions. And so as Malala was telling these stories, and she's talking about the Battle of Maywan, which happened 100 years ago, I was like, this is incredible. I mean, she's named after a girl who was shot, who spoke out and was killed for speaking out. How, you can write? I mean, what? what? Doesn't <laughs> it, but, but then again, well, okay, now what do I do? Like, it's a, how do I tell this part of the story? And, uh, you know, what am I going to get, get men with helmets fighting? And that didn't seem right. And um, I was, it sort of struck me that what if you just told the story from the point of view of a, of a young girl imagining that battle? And so animation came to mind, and a very kind of lyrical, almost storybook animation came to mind. And it became the solution to this idea of presenting the Muslim world. Which is that all that imagery is so gnarly and, and scary, and, and yet their description of their world is so lovely. Beautiful. And so the, your, your problems end up providing some of the cool solutions. And, and yeah, that's great. Uh, and one last question, yes. Before I answer that question, um, I just wanted to thank a few people. I want to thank Richard, because we, we sat down, I don't know, six months ago and, and thought this evening up, and it's been very special for me. Very, Great very, for us. very, very special for me. And President Paxson, who um, we'll see later, and, and um, Marissa, I was getting there, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Beppy and Bernie, all the Bonanno clan. Uh, <laughs> Bernie, you're a great father and a great grandfather and a great alumnus, and you're, we're so lucky to know you. Um, and Michelle Wax, who's, who, who had the original idea, so thank you. Uh, and everyone who came out tonight, 
this is a, a memory and a special memory of this. And everyone at the Stories for Good, um, uh, and Keith Brown, the professor this morning. Um, for me, to answer your question, for me, um, my movies are all about what you just said. Um, and it goes to my father who taught me what I know. Um, he made all these social justice documentaries. He filmed in coal mines and political campaigns and sugar cane uh, fields, um, fought for workers' rights. And, um, and whenever I get too ahead of myself, what in 86 we were protesting South Africa and Brown's investment in, um, in South African companies. And, and, he would, and I would start to say, well, make a movie about that. He goes, don't forget. Forget about the issue for a moment. People are interested in people when they watch a movie. And uh, um, the issues are very important to me. Uh, and the people who work on things like girls' education and on Syria, refugees, the Taliban, American intervention, <laughs> drones, those, that's important work. Um, and the work of great ac academics and, and nonprofits and activists, but films are um, are special in, they c in that they connect you to people. And you, um, and my father taught me that, and that's what it's all about for me: is how do I how do I get closer and closer and closer and closer? And I don't I still don't know how to do it, but it's all about trying to do it. Well, I would just say, and I'm sure I speak for everyone, that I think you actually do know how to do it. Uh, <laughs> and um, I just want to say that this was extraordinary. Not only you sharing this incredible uh, film with us, but also just sharing uh, who you are, the way you think, the way you feel in your work. This was just an amazing uh, evening. So please join me in thanking uh, Davis Guggenheim for his wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.